Question 1. If a module keeps crashing, does IIS 7.0 have ability to remove the erring module and recycle the app pool without that module? Answer. This must be done manually. Question 2. What is the impact of turning off kernel mode cache? Answer. The impact will depend on the server load. If you are doing 10,000 requests per second, you will sorely miss kernel caching. However, if you are doing 100 requests per second, you probably will not notice. It depends heavily on the content being served. IIS 5.0 did not have a kernel mode component and it worked well for most customers. Question 3. Does the installation order of modules matter? Answer. If you are installing via the server manager GUI, add features order of installation does not matter. The add features wizard checks all dependencies and will alert you if you are missing any required modules. In addition, add features wizard knows the correct ordering of modules. If you are installing from a command line or using an unattended installation, the order of modules doesn't matter. Again, setup knows the correct ordering of modules, but you are responsible for identifying all dependencies. If you fail to include a required dependency, unattended slash command line setup will fail. Question 4. What is the memory footprint of an application pool? Does it load the CLR? Answer. An application pool that only serves static files with all features installed will have a footprint of 3 MB private bytes, 5 MB page file. This is larger than IIS 6.0. Windows Server 2008 handles multiple application pools better than WS03. When ASP.NET requests are made, we preload a small amount of the CLR during startup till the 100 KB. The preload load is configurable by a property on the application pool. It is called managed runtime version. The rest of the CLR builder 8 MB will be loaded on the first ASPX request. Question 5. Do customers need to have a 32-bit application pool and 64-bit application pool with the access customers in 32-bit application pools? Answer. Access only works in 32-bit application pools. Loading the user profile. Load user profile property on the app pool is an issue when classic ASP is used because access is using the temp directory which doesn't allow access to the anonymous user when the user profile is loaded. Question 6. What are the limitations for Windows Server 2008 Web Edition? Answer. Windows Server 2008 Web Edition is much improved and we have focused hard on removing the artificial limits. The final licensing is not yet complete but we are planning to remove all hardware restrictions. Allow 4 X processors and 32 GB RAM on X64 SQL is allowed and SharePoint will be installable on the SKU. Question 7. What support will Windows Server 2008 have for front page server extensions? Answer. FPSE is no longer a part of Windows Server. We are working with a third party to create a download package for FPSE to run on Windows Server 2008 slash IIS 7.0. It does not have any new features or enhancements, only fixes to make it compatible. Question 8. Does Windows Server 2008 support in-place upgrades? Answer. We recommend that Windows Server 2008 be installed fresh and migrated to or just put new customers on new servers. We suggest that a well-managed list of third-party components and configurations is documented for each server so that the current environment can be replicated on the new server. See the recommendations in the shared hosting paper for site and application pool configuration. A tool to assist in the migration will be released in the near future. In-place upgrades are supported for the following scenarios. Windows Server 2003 can be upgraded to WS2K8 Beta 3, WS2K8 RC0, WS2K8 RC1, and WS2K8 RT. Windows Server 2008 Beta 3 can be upgraded to WS2K8 Beta 3 and WS2K8 RC0. Windows Server 2008 RC0 can be upgraded to WS2K8 RC0, WS2K8 WS2K8 RC1 and WS2K8 RTM. Windows Server 2008 RC1 can be upgraded to WS2K8 RC1 and WS2K8 RTM. If the server is in shared configuration mode, it must be reverted to standalone configuration before the upgrade is run. To do so, disable shared config. Copy down the application host. Config and encrypted keys to the local machine. Run the upgrade on each server. Then re-enable shared config. Question 9. Is it possible to specify a log file to be used during unattended setup? If so, is it possible to be granular on what is or is not logged? Answer. Both the log files that setup is writing and the IIS 7 log are always on. It is not granular about what gets logged.
Question 10. Is it possible to specify third-party modules for use by PKG MG during an unattended setup? Answer. We do not provide any way to configure modules other than Windows modules during setup. There may be a way through generic unattended setup to run something after setup is done and in that a user could do some coding. Question 11. What is the performance hit for failed request tracing? Is it possible to do failed request tracing for all websites on a particular server? Answer. Tracing all requests at less than 1000 requests per second should be less than 5% CPU. It is possible to configure a global tracing rule for all sites. Tracing can be enabled for all sites by changing the site defaults section. Question 12. Is it possible to limit the amount of memory an application pool will use? Answer. No. But there is memory-based recycling which will recycle app pool that exceed configured memory limits. Question 13. Will the credentials encrypted with the machine key will be lost as a result of sysprep? Is there any workaround for this? Answer. Encryptions made before sysprep are lost after sysprep. There is no workaround. Question 14. How does shared configuration handle multiple machines dealing with encrypted credentials? Answer. You can export the machine keys and import them into all the servers so that decryption works. The UI for Server Beta 3 includes a feature called Shared Configuration which will allow you to do that. Click Export and it will encrypt the machine keys. Copy them along with application host. Config and administration. Config to a path. After that, from all the other machines you can select Import and it will import the machine keys and point the config to the shared configuration. Question 15. Can both classic and integrated managed pipeline mode be enabled at the same time? If so, can it be configured such that some applications use one and some use the other? Answer. Different app pool can have different values for this setting. Applications can be assigned to different app pool.